Now I'd like to talk about pedal technique. I approach my feet very much like my hands. I can use just the smallest amount of movement, like if my hands were staying on the snare drum, I would be using wristed strokes like this. I could do the same thing with either pedal. Of course, I can lift my hands up and use the weight of my arms, kind of a molar system to get more volume. Same thing with my feet. So that I call a hip stroke. If your heels are down, you're playing from your ankles and you're playing with the toes of your feet, playing quietly. If you lift your heels up and raise your feet off the pedals, you're moving from your hips. And this is a much louder sound because you got the strongest and heaviest muscle in your body being in your leg. So you can literally just take advantage of the weight. Kind of like if you were to jump off a stool, boom, it'd be nice and thick sounding. So with the bass drum pedal itself, I'm gonna demonstrate a heel versus an ankle versus a leg stroke. But I'd like to suggest that you start by webbing your hands together and putting them under your leg and then taking your foot and suspending it above the pedal. Take your toe, similar to knocking. You're just tapping, moving from the ankle. You can see that there's a possibility that you can do this at different speeds. And then the next thing is that you want to gently place your foot. Notice the toe is sort of not all the way up the pedal. There's an actual fulcrum, a sweet spot on the pedal. I'll demonstrate that in a minute. But here, you put the beater close to the head and keep your toe in contact with the pedal. And then you can tap again, but make contact with the head. One of the things about speed that's often overlooked is distance. If you want to go faster, you need to shorten the stroke. The volume will decrease some, but speed has a built-in dynamic excitement. So even though it might be slightly softer, which is kind of necessary to create more speed, it doesn't sound much softer because the tempo is exciting. So it's kind of one of those things like if you're going to bounce a basketball very quickly, it has to have a very short distance. So the faster you're going, the shorter the stroke. Makes sense. So now I'll just demonstrate how I can play slower rhythms that might be heavier with a hip stroke and then faster rhythms with a toe stroke. So. So that's what I use when I try to play faster is that t -t 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 technique. I'll, I'll go a little bit quicker. So those are some different ways you can get the bass drum pedal to work really well. I do the same kinds of techniques with the hi-hat except I don't have quite that same clarity. Obviously these are two metal cymbals and if I play quickly they're not gonna have that sort of short sound. Again, I can play heel down, which makes the sound longer and fatter. I can play heel up, which makes the sound a little louder, shorter, snappier, and the cymbal pitch goes up a little bit. Just like if I was to mash the bass drum beater into the head, it would raise the note. If I release it, it's lower. Mash sound, release sound. Same thing with this, get a little softer sound. You can even go so far as to splash them where you like this. I can do it with my heel. Again, more weight, more sound. Sometimes I'll do a little sizzle splash where I'll splash it and then I'll hold the cymbals together so they sizzle. Instead of, it'd be. So I like to mix up those sounds. I'm really into cymbal sounds, and I really hear the difference between playing with this heel up technique and getting a really short sound versus playing heel down and getting a longer sound. You'll notice as I play some of the tracks where the heel's up, you can't get an open hi-hat sound very well. And then if I lower the heel, all of a sudden the cymbals open up and you get a really nice sound. So whether you're playing the bass drum or the hi-hat pedal, the biggest issue is balance. 
if you were to lift both feet, you would literally fall into the drum set. So you really have to make sure your stool's at a proper height. I like to make sure my knees are a little bit low below my hips, so as I raise my heels up, I've still got gravity working in my favor, and I'm not lifting my knees up above the plane of gravity. So either one heel's down when the other's up most of the time, so that I can put the weight on the heel and keep the sound open on the bass drum instead of always defaulting to mashing the beater like that. So that's real important. One more time, here's four mashed strokes versus four released strokes. And then finally, the sweet spot, as I was referring to. Where's that fulcrum? Fulcrum is a pivot point on a lever. Like with the drumstick, if you move your hand up and down, you'll find a spot when you let it bounce. It really rebounds nicely. Same thing with the bass drum pedal. So the method of discovering this is to raise your heel, put your toes far forward, mash the beater, and then move your foot down the bass drum pedal and then back up again, and then experiment until you find the spot on the pedal where the pedal really seems to respond nicely. So here's that demonstration. Too far. That feels good. Yeah, see that's just, it's like holding your drumstick at the front and trying to get any kind of leverage. You always hold it toward the back. And there's a saying in baseball, if you want to hit it out of the park, you choke back on the baseball bat. So the further back within reason that your foot is on the pedal board, then the more thrust you can get and really slam that beater. So for me, it's kind of somewhere in this zone when I'm using a heel up technique. That's, I have to work much harder. So I like my foot somewhere back here. Again, you just want to experiment with that until you find that sweet spot on there and then you can play there hopefully as much as possible to get the best possible sound and response. So keep these things in mind with your feet as you play and hopefully you can develop some more pedal techniques throughout the exercises in this book.